I am. The Craft Dad. Today's side project is the Electric Scooter Reborn. This is an electric scooter that my friend had bought for her daughter about seven years ago. And well, it's time to upgrade it and add some lights for safety. Because her daughter's going to be riding the scooter at night, we needed to get a uh, headlamp. And so we found this LED light that is super bright. And when combined with a uh, light director or deflector or whatever you want to call this, uh, it helps focus the light towards the front of the scooter so that she can see well at night. Uh, of course, we've got to modify it in order for the uh, fixture itself to fit inside the reflector. So just using the Dremel and the sanding bit, I was able to get a nice uh, snug fit, not too tight because there's bumps on the side of the uh, fixture that uh, I had to make room for. As you can see here, I'm testing the leads. I'm actually testing the light out, making sure uh, it works, and I'm trying to figure out the backside. Uh, one of the problems that we identified is that there's not a whole lot of room behind the plastic uh, cover of the scooter and so I can't have the back end of the light fixture here sticking out the uh, the five inches that it is and so as we work uh, been you know looking at it lighting it up seeing how bright it is and one of the interesting things that I found out is that the light itself is uh, registered for 12 volts but the battery pack that they have set up actually delivers 15 volts of uh, electricity, which makes the light uh, super bright. Uh, the downside to this is by putting in more voltage, you can actually burn out the LEDs. And so here you see we've got the bike. We're continuing to disassemble it some more. So this is where I decided to do the test fit. We removed the plastic light cover. Uh, from the fake light, we were going to put the real light inside there to keep the uh, the aesthetic part of the bike uh, good. We removed the shiny plastic uh, backing uh, just so it's not ruined. Now, now messing with the LED, I found out there's two little nodes in the back. The red arrow points to the one that actually causes the whole LED bulb to light up. And so that one we definitely want to make sure we uh, connect to. So as we try to fit in the light fixture, we end up having to remove more and more of the uh, deflector. Uh, but that's okay, because uh, we just need the deflector to deflect uh, part of the light in the back. And so we, we shrink it down to the size that we need. This is part of why planning out your project is good, uh, instead of just going at it gun ho like I tend to do a lot. Uh, but yeah, you want to plan it out you know, figure out is this the right size. This was actually one of two scrap pieces that I had from my kids, so it wasn't uh, troublesome. Here we have the pieces. Uh, we ended up uh, needing to prime them first. We didn't want to sand them because the, the scratches were coming through. So we primed them uh, with the paint. And then once the prime primer had set, we went with the uh, turquoise ocean blue color that she had picked out. But the color came out really nice, and then uh, we sprayed it with uh, high gloss uh, finish in order to give it that nice uh, shine again. So now to make, uh, I made slits to add in the uh, LED, uh, the wires for the LED controller that for the, will control the lights that go underneath. And then I added a side slit for the on-off switch for the headlight. Now again, this is where planning would have been good. Because I would have figured out again that where I was putting the switch and the switch I was using were not the best combination to use in that spot. And it later caused uh, several problems that eventually we fixed by taking a different switch that was more of a, a left right switch versus a push in uh, toggle switch. And, uh, and we fixed it. But as you can see here, I'm using the Dremel and the uh, metal cutting piece to try to shape the uh, brace for the switch to get it to fit uh, better into the slot. The switches that just toggle left or right are probably better to use. Uh, as you can see here, for the wiring, I'm just using hot glue. 
I take the wire, bend it around it itself, and then I hot glue the joint. Because the wires are not moving heavily, they're more stationary once in place, there's no real need to uh, use a solder and solder the ends. Um, you know, so you can get away with using hot glue. You don't have to solder all the joints. You just have to make sure that something is holding them together uh, nicely. You can even just use the uh, shrink wrap tube uh, that will form a nice tight fit. And now, as I always say, you want to test, test, and retest. Constantly test throughout the project to make sure that it is working as intended. So as you can see here, it looks like it's working as intended, but what it's really doing is only lighting up partially the uh, front uh, LED, uh, the nodes that connected to, uh, I lost connection with that one that I had the red arrow pointing to to get full illumination. So as you can see here, the bottom's lit up and just the very front and center is lit up. This is running off of only a 9 volt battery right now. Outside or in the dark, it lights up pretty well. But we're going to then add it to the battery's 12-volt uh, battery to get better lighting. For those of you that have kids, keep the broken toys, or at least cut off the switches. Those switches can be very useful in projects. So using the switch and adding it into the bike, which I didn't take pictures of, as you can see here, we got the lights with 12-volt power and the front light working correctly. And here we have the backlights going on. As you can see how much brighter it is. And this is with no other lights on in the garage. And then, of course, with the switches, she can control which lights are on and which lights are off. The scooter, we, we added in this light here. It's a, it's a bright LED 15 uh, lights. Uh, runs off 12 volt batteries. Uh, the problem is, is it's actually melting the plastic here and the plastic uh, ring, that's uh, the reflector. The wires run from here uh, down the side here and it's connected to this switch here. We did have a push switch, but uh, as I mentioned before, there wasn't enough space between the two parts here for the switch. So using a on off switch actually worked a lot better. Uh, this is the switch for the uh, floor lights that are below the uh, electric scooter. Uh, all I did was cut some notches here for the two uh, outgoing wires to, to wrap around and, and be able to go down. And then the bottom one, I just drilled a hole. The uh, switch itself has the uh, 3M tape, so it's, it's actually stuck on there pretty good. This is connected directly to the battery. Uh, the light itself is connected directly to the battery. And then down here, in between the power button for the scooter and the charging port, I added in another little switch. This is what turns on the LED lights for the tail, uh, which are located back here. And so these lights, just you know, they're state, uh, permanent lights that come on. They don't blink or anything. Uh, it's just to uh, make it more visible, and it's all connected to this 12 volt battery right here. For the battery itself, I used nine, two 9 volt. Uh, uh, connectors to make it more of a quick disconnect in case uh, the owner needed to take the battery out for whatever reason. Um, that way it's not all hardwired in. So those are the modifications we did to the scooter. And you can see the, the lights down below. It lights it up nicely for the teenager. And where did you get the lights at? And we actually got all of these lights at um, Pet Boys. And uh, they were fairly priced and they, they work nicely. These were meant for a car, but uh, we used them for a scooter.